In today's episode, we talk about the hidden gym, rides, and restaurants at each of the four Walt Disney World parks. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing that was all started by a monster. You are listening to the Main Street Magic Podcast with your hosts, Jeremy Stein and John Marone. Hello and welcome to another episode of Main Street Magic. I'm your host, Jeremy Stein, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host and my very good friend, John Marone. Good evening. In today's episode, we discuss our top attraction and restaurant at each of the Disney World parks that tends to be overlooked and underrated. Please check us out on the web at MainSTMagic.com, as well as like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Main ST Magic. So, John, we're going to uh, kind of kick off this episode. And again, we're talking about an attraction. Could be a ride. Could be a show. Um, it could be Hall of Presidents. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. But let's talk about that. And then let's talk about a um, food. It could be a restaurant. Maybe it's a food cart. You know, um, a dessert. Something like that that is overlooked and often underrated at each of the parks. And let's kick it off at uh, Under Construction Land, or um, Hollywood Studios, and what are you going to go with on each of those items? So Hollywood Studios, for underrated, this is an attraction I like. It's also one that, you know, I don't know how much it's it's underrated, but it's there. I, Muppet Vision 3D. I just think Muppet Vision 3D. So here you are. It's a 12-minute pre-show, plus then the actual video, or the movie, the 3D movie, that goes on is probably another 10 minutes. So you're a good 30 minutes in 584 seats. And it's just, while they call it 3d, it's actually 4d. Yeah. So there's a lot of effects that are going on while the movie is going on that are going to be, you know, exciting for the kids. It's great for all ages. It's usually an easy attraction to get into though. Nowadays it's, you know, it's going to be up in the air. This Hollywood Studios attendance drop off so much because of all the construction, nothing open, that most things now are a walk on. Or do people still go there because it's just one of the parks and because there's only, you know, six things open that everything is just packed? I'm going to head more along the line that because of Animal Kingdom picking up so much, Hollywood Studios is kind of uh, backing off a little bit. So I think that Muppet Vision 3D tends to be an attraction that's a little bit overlooked. If I think of a food or, you know, that type of item that's overlooked there, this is something that's only been around a couple years, and it's the Brown Derby Lounge. And the Brown Derby Lounge is one where they have small plates, and the small plates are anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks. but they have the Cobb salad, they have pork belly, they have sliders, they have a cheese and a charcuterie, um, plate. They have a dessert trio. So they have a lot of different items on their menu. Plus they have beverages. So you can get beers, wines, mixed drinks. And that's a nice little place to sit at that to me is somewhat overlooked. If you think of Brown Derby, people think I'm going there, I'm sitting down, I'm having my dinner. But the lounge is just a way that one, you can get the Brown Derby experience, save a little bit of money, once you're in there, it's a nice place to get into because it's not big. It could be crowded, but that doesn't mean it's not overlooked. Yeah. So how about you for Hollywood Studios? Yeah, so for the attraction, I'm going to go with One Man's Dream, um, and that's going to soon be turning over to Walt Disney Presents. It is one of the items in the locations that's under construction as you head towards uh, Midway Mania and the future Toy Story Land. And it's still currently in its state, if you go right now, as they start to turn it over um, to Walt Disney Presents, uh, it is, it's the history of Walt Disney. It's his life. You have um, examples of the models that he first built when you know he, he was starting to plan all this. You've got – there's so much history behind it as you walk through this exhibit is what it really is. Um, I found it so interesting. Lately, they've been putting some character meet and greets in there. Uh, they had Moana. What was in there now, uh, they're still running, I believe, Star-Lord and Groot, which you Baby Groot. Baby Groot. If you have not seen Baby Groot, it's an experience you have to, you have to go to. Um, and then what they're also doing in the theater, and I know a lot of people were upset. They took away – they had, used to have a film that was kind of like you know a little bit of the history of Walt Disney. Um, they took that away, and they now do previews for whatever their, their next big movie is. 
I'm not sure as they turn it over what that theater will become. I would like to see it go back to a history of Walt Disney uh, instead of a three minute preview of their upcoming movie. But what you're going to look forward to here um, very soon is the models for Toy Story Land and Galaxy's Edge. So you'll get to see the models from D23. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but again, from a history, an exhibit about Walt Disney and his life, it's it's outstanding. For the food, I I, I was going to pick the Brown Derby Lodge, but I haven't been there. So I, I didn't want to talk about something I hadn't been to. So I'm really glad you picked it because I was scrolling through the menu and, and was blown away um, because you get to get that sample of Brown Derby which is so popular and everybody loves. So I I went with Backlot Express, and the only reason I went there is for their uh, Capri sandwich, which is probably the underrated item. Everybody loves the Darth Vader chicken and waffles, um, you know. So I, I think that's more of the go-to. But their Capri sandwich is outstanding. Um, as we've talked about before, my wife and I split meals a lot to save money and and you know not overload ourselves so we can walk around the parks. Um, but, but that's what I would go through as my underrated. And if you're, um, if you're really adventurous, they, they have the Afterburner, which I've, I've not purchased. Might have to try it, but I'm just afraid of what will happen. And it's Angry Orchard Chris Apple Hard Cider with Fireball in the drink. Yeah. So Apple I, and cinnamon. I, yeah, I mean, it sounds delicious. Watch out what time of day you're probably drinking that, I'm thinking. So maybe that's, maybe that's before you head back to the hotel. Um, if they could turn that into a slushy. Oh, we're set then. That'd yeah, be good. Yeah, we, we could head over to Epcot for that one. So, all right, so Hollywood Studios, I think we did pretty well there, considering it is a, a shell of a park right now, but can't wait to see what's coming. Uh, Animal Kingdom, your, your underrated attraction, your underrated food. So my underrated attraction is probably the largest attraction there. I will not say it is overlooked, but I think it's really underrated, and it's the Kilimanjaro Safaris. Here you're looking at something that is an eight. It's supposed to be an 18 minute ride, just because of how often they have to stop because there's a giraffe crossing in front of your vehicle, or you're just stopping and looking at different animals. It's going to be closer to that, you know, mid 20 to 30 minute attraction. It's never the same thing twice. If you listen to our previous podcast for Fast Pass, we said that this was a must-do Fast Pass. So if you get it, you're not waiting as long. It's something for everybody, no matter the age. I just think that sometimes this ride got all the attention when the park opened. Now that Pandora is opened, now that you have Expedition Everest, now that different things have come on, it's still a main attraction, but I still think it, it. I don't hear people talking about it as much as what they used to. Now, that little red is off the ride. Um, at least it's more now of just a true safari. I didn't need the story of trying to chase the poachers and uh, save little red. It was nice, but I'm okay with that being gone. But they've also added more animals, a few more exhibits there that they weren't there before so if you haven't done it in a number of months go ahead one of the things i'm also looking forward to is the fact that it runs until 9 30 at night now so being able to go and do a night safari yeah. so i just think for me while it's very popular it's to me overlooked yeah and what's what i think is great about that one it's it's one that depends on your tour guide you know if you go back to like a jungle cruise um the safari is something depending on your tour guide it can be way underrated. I mean, we've had some outstanding tour guides that have taken that ride or, <coughs> or that uh, attraction to the next level. Um, so I, th I think that's something that makes it even better that people don't think about as well. Good. So overlook food for Animal Kingdom. Again, a popular place, but now that you have Tiffin's and you have you know different sit-down restaurants, I often think that Flame Tree Barbecue doesn't get its due. This is one of those that the people who are in the know rave about it. But a lot of people overlook it and say, ah, it's a counter service, it's barbecue, I'm not really that into it, I'll, I'll grab a burger, I'll get something else. But for Flame Tree, you're probably looking at 9 to 20 bucks. They have ribs, chicken, pulled pork. They even have, for $6.49, an order of fries with pulled pork and cheese on top of them. 
kids menu, right? They have chicken sandwich. They have an uncrustable peanut butter and jelly hot dog, baked chicken. They serve beer and wine, but also they have this drink. And this is, to me, kind of a value. They have a mandarin orange vodka lemonade. Now, one of my favorite drinks, whether I'm at Vero Beach or I'm at one of the Disney pools, is the black cherry lemonade. Mm -hmm. And when you get the black cherry lemonade at the resorts or Vero Beach, it's ten fifty. Here, mandarin orange vodka lemonade, you're eight fifty. So you not too bad. You save a couple bucks, but the barbecue at Flame Tree is actually good. Their sauces are good. The food is usually cooked pretty good. You have plenty of different seating options there. Um, some of them are kind of hidden as you walk through there. But it's a uh, it's a nice little place where you're going to be that 9 to 20 bucks. And whether you want to do lunch or dinner, it's a good spot. So how about you for Animal Kingdom? Yeah, so for, for my attraction, um, and I've heard a lot of hate almost for this one, is the Flights of Wonder show. Uh, with the birds. So we love this. We don't do it every time. But again, it's something you can easily get into. You don't have to line up out there or anything, you know, well in advance. Um, one of the things we like about waiting in line is they always have pin traders out front. So there's there's somebody out there. So you have, if you are waiting in line, uh, you can go ahead and do that. And it's interactive. We've had both of our daughters have been selected to go up on stage and interact with the show. Even if you're in the audience, there's some certain inter- certain interactions that you can do. Um, you might you have to hold something up in the air, and, and it's humorous. It's I mean, it's birds performing tricks like you wouldn't believe. So I think that often gets overlooked. Um, for food, I'm gonna head over to Dino Land, which nobody, in my opinion, if you're an adult, you don't you don't want to go. You don't want to take your kids to Dino Land because um, you have you have the dig site which you just have to sit in the hot sun while your kids run around for hours on end with 1,000 other children, and you don't know where they are half the time. Um, and you have your your carnival side of Disney with the games, and you have the worst ride on all of property, which is Primeval World. Um, if, if you're interested in breaking a hip, just just go on Primeval World. And, and my oldest daughter makes me go on it every time. She's old enough to go on it on her own, but I just I still don't feel comfortable with letting her go on her own. So I just suck it up and do it every time. But in that area, as soon as you come out of Dinosaur, the ride is Restaurantosaurus. And I'm going to go back to my budget episode, which is Toppings Bars. So it's it's a large, large area. Prices are good. You get chicken sandwiches. You can get burgers, chicken tenders, Toppings Bar. So you can take that plain chicken sandwich, dress it up with whatever you want. Indoor seating outdoor seating um and it has like a it's an archaeological type of atmosphere so it's it's pretty interesting for i think both adults and kids but you know it's it's the one that we go to if we're going to go ahead and eat at animal kingdom um and and we're not going to one of the the big timers like tiffin's or, or nomad lounge or some of those places um so let's move on to epcot and talk ride and food and uh Interested to hear yours here, John. And actually, mine come, both come from the same country. So my attraction and food both come from France. It is not slushy <laughs> for either of them. The movie, The Impressions de France, 18-minute widescreen movie, just the different scenes that they have. Uh, it's a sit-down theater, so unlike where... Where I bump this one up above Canada and China is while the 360 theaters are great, you have to stand. Yeah. Here is France, and I'd say that the screen is not 360, but you're probably 270 because it does come down the sides in the front. There are periods of time where even though you're sitting, you can get that mind trick where you feel like you're flying or moving, whether you're in a hot air balloon. You are with um, the horses and animals on a hunt in the countryside. You are in the vineyards. You are There are so many great scenes in that that, uh, to me, that's an overlooked attraction. You go back there to even get into the theater. You're going, past, you're going down that street yeah. where there's shops on the right-hand side. On the left, you now have the gelato. Once you get into the building, there's a little store. You also have the uh, patisserie 
which to me is the best for desserts if you want to grab something quick from uh, France, but that's tucked in the back. That I've never been in here where it's a full theater at all. So this, to me, is a wonderful overlooked attraction. Get you out of the heat, get you to sit down, and it's a nice little place right in there. The overlooked food in France is actually Monsieur Paul, mm. which is upstairs at France. So if you are at the France Pavilion, there is the lower level restaurant that you see as you walk by the people are eating so it's like they're you know the city street and people are walking by but there is actually an upstairs restaurant above that to get to it you would actually walk on the other side of the downstairs restaurant Mm -hmm. building there's a little door with a staircase it's almost hidden like it's secret this is not a budget-friendly restaurant so this would be something that you're going for an anniversary, you're going for a birthday. It's a, you want a nice meal. They recently refurbished it, but here you're looking at 35 to 60 bucks in entree. Yeah. Um, but the entrees are, you know, beef tenderloin. They have a lot of good seafood dishes, duck, which we talked about in one of our episodes before. Um, you know, different types of cod. They do have a kids menu. The kids menu though, you're still 13 to 29 bucks just on the kids menu. So they have a red snapper, they have a filet on there, a chicken. So again, if you're going for the kids, it's not a chicken nugget cheeseburger place for them. So this would be a little bit more of just go for the adults. I haven't been to it since they refurbished it. I have been to it in the past. And it's one of those where you can't believe it's this restaurant inside of a theme park. Mm -hmm. And to me, it gets overlooked because people aren't looking to spend, you know, a couple hundred bucks on food inside the park while they're already there. They'll do it in the resort. Yeah. But if this restaurant was in a resort, I think it would be booked all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So those are my two for uh, for Epcot. I'm not going to go. It's not really it's not an attraction. It's not a ride. It's not a show. It's actually shopping. And I'm going to pick both Japan and, and China, the, those two pavilions. The shopping through those two, whether you buy something or you just browse, is unbelievable. Like, there, there's, it's so interesting. There's so much stuff going on. Um, you know, there's so many different snacks and treats. There's so many different clothing items and toys. Um, I, I've gone into uh, China and bought socks for the kids, like, numerous times just because they were kind of funny and inventive. There's so much stuff to look at, and these stores are gigantic as you walk through there. So I think it's something that you don't think about. You don't think of shopping in general often in Epcot, and it has some of the best shopping in all of Disney because you get to go to each of these countries around the World Showcase and find things you cannot find anywhere else. So if you want very unique Disney souvenirs, they might not even be Disney in the sense of Mickey Mouse is on them or, you know, the the normal IP type stuff is on them from Disney. Um, It has some of the best shopping go. And I love both Japan and China Uh, for my underrated restaurant or food would be the Yorkshire fish, which is in the United Kingdom. And I only say it's underrated and overlooked because I've never seen a line there. And it is fish and chips done to perfection. Very well priced. It's a large portion and it's outstanding. Again, no lines. You can get a beer. You can get your food. You can sit right outside of Rose and Crown if you want to sit and eat for a little bit or start to head your way up to France before you get your slushy and uh, sit on the sit on the patio there. The um, all the open seating that's over the water and the food there is outstanding for a great price. So let's let's end it here with Magic Kingdom. Where are you going there for your uh, your ride and your your food? So Magic Kingdom, I'm going to the one that when you used to go get certain fast passes back in the day when you had to stick your ticket in <laughs> and it would spit out a time, you would always get this attraction spit out as well for free. So you would go and say, um, you know, before when it was set up, I want to say that at the time, even if it was Peter Pan, right, you'd go get your Peter Pan Fast Pass and it would spit out a Fast Pass for this attraction for free. And it's Mickey's Philharmagic. Yeah. So 
Mickey's PhilharMagic, you can always get into it. 12-minute movie, sit down, 3D. Um, great, again, big wide screen on it. It's great music in it. So <laughs> it's based upon Mickey and Fantasia. And Donald gets into a little mischief and let the fun ensue from there. Great effects inside the theater. So again, they call it 3D, but it's 4D. It's going to keep the kids entertained. It's going to keep you entertained. And it's usually always easy to get in and out of. So that's one of my easy go-to attractions if I want to go sit, see something for a little bit of time, and just kind of relax with everybody. And to me, overlooked, right? If you're in that area... It's Small World. It's yeah. Peter Pan. I'm heading over to Mine Train. I'm going somewhere, but I'm skipping that, that I really don't know what it is. Because I don't think that the signage or anything does a good job of telling you that what you're going to encounter when you go inside. But I think once you've been through it, I think it's a really good attraction. Yeah. For my food, I'm actually just going to walk right across the walkway from that and go to Pinocchio's Village House. Pinocchio's Village House has been gone through so many reincarnations over the days. So they've had so many different types of food. But I think once Be Our Guest opened, this place just kind of nobody paid attention to it anymore. There were periods of time where they limited the hours on it. They've done all kinds of different things. So if the park is packed, this will be packed because it's everybody who can't get in anywhere else. But for the most part, you could get in there. Not going to break the bank. Flatbreads, tons of different flatbread pizzas. Um, they're probably specialty. They do have a regular chicken parm, but their specialty is a chicken parm sandwich. For the kids, you have nuggets, the flatbreads, mac and cheese. So a little bit of something for everybody. And if you can get in there and then go up and eat on the second floor and get a window seat, you can now look down in the small world and see everybody going by as they start their journey into small world. So it's a nice little place to, to go to, to me overlooked, not going to kill the bank, but at least they, the flatbread is decent if you're going to get it and an okay place. So uh, interested to hear your two here for magic kingdom. Yeah, we no, we love it there. The, um, the flatbreads, like you said, are outstanding and they have a chicken Caesar salad that is actually very, very good. And again, as you said, if you can overlook, um, it's a small world, then you get to sit there, you get to eat, and you get to laugh at everyone that is embarking on It's a Small World because uh, their life will, will never be the same again. So my underrated rider attraction, ha it's not going to be underrated to everyone because I think it has a cult following, and that's the People Mover. We love the People Mover. Every single time we go to Magic Kingdom, we go on it. And there's a few reasons. One, walk right on. If it's not broken down, and it will break down, but even when it does, you're talking 10 minutes later, lines are back open and you're going up. Uh, don't be confused by the lines to Astro Orbiter because you'll think that's the line to People Mover. You don't want to go on, but go on People Mover. It will take you through all of Tomorrowland. It's going to go inside of the attractions. You get to overlook everything from Space Mountain and Buzz Lightyear. It, it just, it's a relaxing ride. It's something to break up the day. And I just, I think it's something that it's neat to see that level of Tomorrowland and the castle and Magic Kingdom in the hub from a different angle. Only thing I wish is that was a little bit like the, the railroad and it went through more of Magic Kingdom, but obviously it's a Tomorrowland attraction, so it makes sense. Uh, but we love, love the people mover. For my food, we're going to go back to last episode, which was your budget-friendly one and the one that you told us about, and that's Sleepy Hollow. Uh, and you said it last episode, it's, it's overlooked. Nobody knows about Sleepy Hollow. And so as you're heading from the hub over the bridge into Liberty Square, it's on the right corner there, you could walk right past it, and as you said before, their their waffle sandwich, the, the spicy chicken waffle sandwich, is it's so good. You can get breakfast there. You can get the waffles with the Nutella and the strawberries and whipped cream and all these types of things, or you can get them at lunch. Uh, it does have limited hours, so you, you want to make sure that you know, you're, you're there during the right hours, and as you said last time, they're now offering corn dogs, so we'll have to try that next time, but you know, there's, there's a lot of things that, that can go 
underrated at all the different parks. You know, you're used to the long lines. You're used to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and, and Space Mountain and these things. So what I've been doing lately is putting John on the spot with some of these episodes. Um, if you had to look at the most overrated rider attraction at any of the parks and um, let's go overrated food or restaurant at any of the parks, what would you pick for each? Overrated attraction is Peter Pan. I, I just, again, I think we talked about it, episode one or two. It's just no, I, I'll never understand the weights of an hour or longer for an attraction that's two minutes long. And while it's neat, it's there's just nothing to it. So I just think that is probably the most overrated attraction. Overrated on the food side, to me, it's going to fall back to some of the buffets. And if I just, you know, the first thing pops in my head is going to be Crystal Palace, mm-hmm. just because I remember it as a kid, and it was a, such an amazing place to go to. And you look at it, and visually, it's stunning. It's just there at the corner of Main Street, right there by the hub. It's that all glass building. And now you have the Winnie the Pooh characters in there. And you got a buffet that couldn't be more blah if they tried. Um, just lack of choices, lack of kind of anything. So I could probably pick a few different things out, but off the top of my head, if I just you know, right away, Magic Kingdom, just Peter Pan and Crystal Palace are two that it, don't bother. If you miss them, you're okay. Move on. Go to our overlooked ones. Yeah. And you'll have just as good of a time. Yeah, I love that. And I, at the Magic Kingdom um, for food, overrated. I got to go with a turkey leg. I <laughs> I can't. That's one of those two. And 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 Peter Pan. I mean, I agree. Those are the two that everybody talk. I mean, Peter Pan's you know seventy plus minute wait. Everybody's walking around with a giant turkey leg dripping down their arms. My only other ride would be. It's a great ride. It's the it's got to be the shortest ride in all of uh, Disney World is Cali River Rapids over at Animal Kingdom Lodge. We we love that ride, but you go. It's it's a it's a huge <laughs> climax and then a big letdown. Like you drop down that hill and you're like, okay, that ride's over. I just waited, you know, 45, 50 minutes in the burning hot sun. I maybe got wet and cooled off, or maybe I'm as dry as a bone, and I was on the ride for minute and a half i think maybe at most so um yeah. Barn, barnstormers 23 seconds barn barns that's <laughs> an, that's that's another good one and or, or primeval world as we talked about you know i mean that's i i'm not saying it's people it's overrated that everybody wants to go on it but if again you want to talk about a ride that will will break your hips um you don't even have to be an old person that thing's gonna tear you to pieces but you know what are you gonna do about it you do what you can when you're at disney for your kids so we all end up eating turkey legs and riding Peter Pan and uh, Barnstormer and all those types of things. So, uh, again, thank you, John, for being here. Another great episode. Love talking to you about all this stuff. You know, go ahead and check us out on iTunes. Check us out on Google Play. Every time you subscribe or you leave us a rating and a review, it's going to help us boost this show. Uh, join the conversation on Facebook. You know, we're going to post episodes when they release on Facebook. Please let us know what you think about them, and we'd love to hear your opinions on what you'd like to hear in the future, things that you want us to talk about. And we've got a lot of great episodes coming up in the next few months as we continue to go to Disney, as we go to the Halloween party that we've talked about, at the Christmas party that we've talked about, Food and Wine Fest. Uh, so we're real excited to share our adventures with you and hopefully you know, help you plan your Walt Disney World vacation. So that's all for now, and we'll see you real soon.